we are decimated today with an onslaught of lies, fake news, deceptive words of politicians, propaganda, false reports from the battlefronts. Even computer-based artificial intelligence is being designed in such a way as to reflect biases and to fabricate unknown information, making it completely unreliable. We lament the twisted nature of the world today, but lies, lies have been with us since the beginning of recorded history. Evil lurks in falsehoods. To those who worked against him, Jesus said, you belong to your father, the devil. You want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. That's John chapter 8, verse 44. While living in this world, we see the physical manifestations of evil uh, and deception that are revealed in acts of inhumane violence and depravity. Those acts are the product of dark spiritual strong, uh, strongholds. Read Ephesians 6 verse 12. Through his lies, Satan brought about death for mankind, death in the form of lasting separation from God, and he inflicts misery upon, on the world every day by driving wedges between God and humans. In the Garden of Eden, God instructed Adam and Eve, you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you surely will die. That's Genesis 2, verse 17. Soon after, Satan beguiled the humans with this deception. You will not certainly die, said the serpent to the woman, for God knows when you eat from it, your eyes will, will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. That's Genesis 3, verses 4 and 5. So began the death that inflicts human species. Jesus was correct in saying that the devil was a murderer from the beginning, John 8, 44. Since the deception in the garden, our physical bodies wear out and fail so that we are spared from being forever locked in this world. That's Genesis 3, 22 through 24. For the time being, Satan prowls around, sowing seeds of deception and looking for souls to devour. Read 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, and 1 John 5, 19. But we are spiritual beings, and our spirit is designed to return to God, Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Sin, however, can block that path, resulting in spiritual death, that is, permanent separation from God. Spiritual death is devastating. It is the product of unforgiven sin. God's laws were given to allow mankind to recognize sin and understand the need for a savior. Read Galatians 3, 19 and 20. God sent his son to take on the sins of all mankind so that God would see righteousness in those who accept the cover of Jesus. Read uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. In that way, believers avoid spiritual death. Technological developments, allowing greater proliferation of falsehoods, have become weapons of mass destruction today. Falsehoods broadcast over the internet and through television and radio transmissions create divisions and foment strife among the populations of the world. Battles between nations are fostered by ongoing lies. Emphasizing evil by spinning false narratives keeps hatred roiling. While we see the effects of prevarication in the physical world, we can trace the source of lies to the spiritual realm. At its core, evil deception is a spiritual malady brought on by opposition to God. In his second letter to the church in Corinth, Paul wrote, Though we live in the world, we do not wage world we do not wage war as the wor world does the weapons we fight with have divine power to demolish strongholds that second corinthians 10:3 and 4 
So what are those spiritual weapons? What is the arsenal that has been provided to us to fight the lies in this, at their spiritual core? Paul elaborated, believers demolish arguments at every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought, make it obedient to Christ, uh, 2 Corinthians 10.5. So the fight against spiritual darkness and evil strongholds begins with discernment. God has provided standards for living, and he has created us with the ability to reason and process our thoughts. Social turmoil is spawned by falsehoods that are not recognized as false. Racial division, for example, is advanced by a refusal to recognize that we are all made in the image of God and that we share his likeness. The falsehood of gender fluidity, when not recognized as a lie, creates storms of controversy about indoctrination of children and advancing of ungodly replacements for marriage. The lie of, dis of denying that life is formed in the womb perpetuates genocide advanced in ab abortion clinics and divisions seen in the electorate. Wars are often initiated by false claims covering prideful desires to control other people. Evil takes root in pernicious false thoughts. Division begins in the mind and spirit. That's why Paul instructed that we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ, 2 Corinthians 10.5. God created us with the freedom to choose what we think, to discern between right and wrong. He expects us to use our minds, the minds that he has given us. Making our thoughts obedient to Christ involves measuring them against the divine standards of truth. God sent Jesus to earth to live out truth and to demonstrate the standards for godly living. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. He was referring to the path that he opened to rejoin mankind with God. Read John 14, 6. Only by recognizing and embracing truth can we expect eternal life with God. Again, John 14, 6. God's truth is present among men and women today. Christ, who is truth, is with believers always. Read Matthew 28, 20. Lies are the antithesis of God. It is impossible for God to lie, um, Hebrews 6, 18, but discerning the truth and adhering to its lesser traveled path is a challenge for us today. Read Matthew 7, 14. Discernment is just the starting place. Each of us needs to invoke God's strength and protection as we encounter and oppose the lies that are being promulgated by Satan and his minions. We find ourselves caught in the crossfire of the battles between good and evil every single day. Standing firmly on God's principles requires that we be girded with the belt of truth, read Ephesians 6, 14. We need to know that the truth, know what the truth is and wear it, wear it as a belt that holds our cover around us, preventing us from being open to lies. We need to wear the breastplate of righteousness, Ephesians 6, 14. We are covered by righteousness only when we accept Jesus as our Savior. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. As believers, we are equipped with the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation, read Ephesians 6, 16 and 17. And if God is for us, who can be against us? That's Romans 8, 31. Through faith in God, we are protected from the fiery falsehoods that are being hurled at us every day. And because we are promised eternity with our maker, we can act boldly in the here and now. God has issued his holy scriptures for us to use in battle. See, uh, for example, the temptations of Jesus recorded in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, where Jesus countered the laws, the lies of Satan with scripture. The word of God 
is laid out in the Bible. It became flesh in the form of Jesus, and it never leaves us once we commit his word to our hearts. Read John 1, 14, Matthew 28, 20, and Deuteronomy 11, 18, and 20, 18 through 20. Scripture is our weapon then to be used against Satan's lies. Therefore, we need to know Scripture thoroughly so that it is immediately at hand every time we need it. So as we deal with the proliferation of lies in this world today, consider these questions for introspection, if you will. Question number one, where and how do you seek truth? Question number two, how do you use scripture to combat falsehoods? And question number three, how and when do you put on the armor of spiritual warfare as directed in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18? There is one source of truth, God, the Holy Trinity. His divine word is found in scripture and in the person of Jesus and in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God is pure truth. Anything else has the potential of leading us astray. Scripture is the weapon issued to believers. The word is useful to us only when we carry it with us into all situations and train sufficiently to have it ready for all circumstances we face. Scripture that collects dust on the shelf is like a firearm rusting away in a drawer. It provides no cover. Donning the protective armor laid out in Ephesians 6 is needed always because we are likely to encounter the enemy at any moment. Satan is the enemy and he constantly prowls the earth seeking souls to destroy, read 1 Peter 5, 8. Unfortunately, the influence of evil is pervasive today, read John, 1 John 5, 19. Therefore, we need to pray the protection of God's cover at least as often as we change clothes. We are not fully dressed without his protection. The world is filled with lies, and that spawns evil. But God has not left us defenseless. We have the truth. It can destroy deception at its source. Put it fully to work. Mm -hmm.